I want to talk to you guys about today is uh, solar energy and solar cells. So solar energy and particularly solar cells works on uh, something that we call a PN junction. Okay, and so if we take something like a semiconductor, like say a silicon or um, anything that behaves like um, silicon, if we look at silicon, it has what we call four uh, valus electrons. And what that means is in its outer ring or the highest energy state, it has four electrons. Well, we all know that in that highest energy state, atoms feel secure if they have eight electrons. So it's seeking pairs. So what happens is, silicon actually is going to form bonds with other uh, silicone um, uh, uh, atoms and create these, these, these bonds and they end up with eight uh, electrons in their outer energy shield. And this just goes on and on and on. That's the crystalline structure. And so what we want to do before we can create what we call a PN junction is we need to do a thing that's called doping. Now, doping means that instead of having a silicone uh, atom in the middle, we might introduce another similar uh, atom that actually has five valus electrons. And we introduce that to other silicone or semiconductors. It doesn't have to be silicone. And so what we end up having is we have an extra electron. Now, this extra electron is free to move around uh, throughout the structure. And that's what causes current, is, is the flow of electrons. Now, in order to promote that current, usually what we like to do is we like to dope the other side. So there's an anode and a cathode. So we dope one side by adding um, a, a, a similar a semiconductor or metal that has an extra valence electron, five instead of four. And then we do the same thing on the other side, except now we're going to have one less valence electron. So when we introduce that into a structure with, say, silicone, what we, what we actually have is one of those are missing, okay? Because this only has four to give. And so now what we end up having is right here, we have what we call a hole, which is because it's lacking an electron. And so if we're lacking an electron, well, then basically uh, this has a positive charge. So over here, what we end up with is kind of a negative charge. And over here, we have a positive charge. So if I separate these two, uh, what I end up having is I have a negative charge on one side and a positive charge on the other side. And so then our goal in a solar cell is to create the cell in such a way that we allow a path for those negative charges to meet up with those positive charges, which they do in nature automatically. Opposites attract. And so that's how we build a solar cell, uh, basically through doping. And there's some other stuff. Okay, so I've, I've created this little uh, animated slide to kind of help illustrate how a solar cell works. So now if we look at that, uh, semiconductor uh, crystalline structure. This is what it looks like right here. And so doping is the process of replacing one or two of those atoms uh, with something that either has an extra electron or one that's lacking an electron. That helps us to create this uh, opposing uh, charges. So if we look at the atomic structure here, and I just take one, uh, one of those atoms, but we'll do more than one and I, and I remove it, okay, and I replace it with another atom that has an extra electron or one that's lacking a valus electron, then that process is called doping, which I just explained to you a second ago. Now, that isn't enough to create current. But again, I just want to remind you guys that we do this on both sides. On one side, we create a negative charge by adding atoms that have extra valus electrons in their structure. This allows those, extra, those electrons that are free to move around to move around. But they won't go anywhere unless there is an opposing charge. So on the other side of the solar cell, we dope that with a positive charge 
by replacing atoms with um, uh, that, that, that lack one valus electron. And so on one side we have electrons, and on the other side we call them holes, which is, which is like a quasi-positive charge. But in reality, it's just a lack of a, of a negative charge. Now, we have a positive and a negative charge, and that's why we call this a uh, PN junction. We're technically creating an impurity in our semiconductor by adding these extra elements. Now, if I put those two together, my N-type semiconductor that's been doped to have a negative charge, and my p-type semiconductor that's been doped to have a positive charge or a quasi-positive charge. When we put those together, we call that the p-n junction. Okay. Now, what do you think will happen when you have electrons that are free to move around and holes, which are positive charges, that are free to move around? Well, what they'll want to do is they'll want to come together. So you're going to have electrons over on this side and you're going to have um, holes or positive charges on this side. And the two will start to come together right here in this little center section. And so you'll have positive charges that will escape and get over on the end side. And eventually you'll have negative charges that will escape and come from this side over to the P side. So when you have positive, and, and this goes really quick, I mean really quick. But over time, what happens is you start to build up positive charges on one side and negative charges on the other. Now, because of their crystalline structures, they just, there's no place really for them to kind of come together. In reality, on a very small scale, the electrons and holes kind of annihilate each other. And when they do, that creates an overall positive charge on this side and an overall negative charge on this side. Okay. Now, when you have a positive charge on one side of the junction and a negative charge on the other side, you create what we call uh, an electric field. Now, the electric field, uh, a simplest way to explain it is the electric field is like a fence that eventually stops the holes from going this way and it stops uh, the electrons from going this way. So now we end up with holes and electrons stopped right there at that electric field. In fact, the electric field kind of forces them apart a little bit. So now, because of this electric field that's built up over a short amount of time, I have a bunch of free electrons on one side and a bunch of quasi-positive charges on the other side. Now, what the sun does is when the sunlight hits my semiconductor, it adds extra energy. Photons are absorbed by the electrons and they reach a higher energy state. So now these free electrons are free to move around and they're very excited. Likewise, a similar effect takes place on the other side. But because of the electric field, there's no place for them to go. However, if we create a circuit that has a resistor, like say a light bulb or any device that does work, what happens is, is we're going to have electrons will come out this path and around, and we'll have holes that come out this path and around because opposites attract. Okay? Now, that's current. That's current. When we have electrons that are flowing, when they get to that resistor, the light bulb, toaster, or whatever electric device we hook it up to, work is done. And that's basically how solar uh, cells are made.